I wanted to cover Jordan Peterson one more time before closing the book on the topic, for a while at least, because I think there are a lot of misunderstandings. And where I want to start from is from the concept of fame, the famous person, because he is a famous person. But I want to talk more broadly about the notion of fame and what it typically does with people and how it gets to people's heads. And we all know the phenomenon of celebrities, in particular actors from Hollywood, but also similar figures who, upon receiving fame, upon becoming very well known, upon becoming very wealthy, any combination of these things, get into their heads that they are now arbiters of the world, that you can ask them questions, and not only can they weigh in on these questions, on these issues that you might propose to them, they should. And that not only should they weigh in on these questions and issues that you propose to them, but rather whatever view or opinion they're giving is extremely important, which is to say, not only should they, they really, really must, because you need to hear what they have to say about the world. And why? Well, they never really explain that, but as a rule, we can observe this as the consequence of fame, that many people throughout the world let their fame and renown get to them and get to their heads, so they become mouthpieces for all sorts of causes and all sorts of ideas and ideologies that they otherwise would not be advocating for were they normal, mere mortals. But of course, they've risen above mortal status in many cases, at least in their own view, and how they present themselves, and so they can weigh in on a lot of things, and they always have an opinion. Beyond celebrities, you also see this in the sphere of academia. There are people who have risen to fame in academic fields, and they later on subsequently step out of their wheelhouse. I think one of the most common examples of this, and maybe even one of the best ones, at least in recent decades, has been Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky started off as a linguist, made some significant contributions to that field, and I was formerly involved in the field of linguistics, so I know a little bit about what he was talking about, and he made some very interesting observations, to be sure, no doubt. But then throughout the 60s, he moved away from the field of linguistics and moved into politics. He was involved in debates with William F. Buckley. He talked about the Vietnam War and geopolitics. And later on, he talked about media and governments and, and how everything comes together to work. And the vast, vast majority of people who know Chomsky to this day are familiar with him in the context of his political work and his social science work, not the linguistic stuff that they couldn't give a wit about that he produced in earlier days and years. But what happened, of course, was he became famous, basically. And he's no dummy, clearly. And so people, particularly on the left, turned to him and repeatedly asked him questions. And then at some point in time, although never referring to himself as such directly, he appointed himself the authority on all matters political. And honestly, this was somebody who ultimately stepped out of his wheelhouse. And he's not the only one. A lot of people don't know this, but Einstein, famously, E equals MC squared and all that, was routinely asked his political opinions, particularly after World War II, and on the face of it, it seems like it might make sense, but he was a physicist, not a geostrategist or a politician or anything like that. Now, the same thing happens on a much more mundane level. We talked about Hollywood celebrities. We also have people on YouTube, internet famous people, so to speak, who need to weigh in on things all the time. You might, for example, get a streamer from Twitch whose expertise is limited to Fortnite but he might be asked questions about other things and he's required to weigh in on them. On the other hand, you have other individuals who are very famous but don't really practice that, don't really develop that habit. PewDiePie, which might seem to be a ludicrous reference, is one such individual. He rarely weighs in on things. He's just a guy who tries to be funny. And even Joe Rogan, it's rare to see Joe Rogan pontificate to the world. He pontificates on his show, but... Rarely does he pontificate to the world. Now, I'm going to propose to you that Jordan Peterson, our Lord and Savior, suffers in a not-so-small way from the type of megalomania that has afflicted many a celebrity, 
many a person who became famous due to activism like Noam Chomsky or anyone else who might have stepped out of their wheelhouse and not stayed in their lane. But the thing about Peterson is that he goes a few steps further. So at the heart of all this is ego, right? People have different levels of ego. Some are bigger, some are smaller. And a person's ego will inform much of their behavior. And if a person's ego is big enough, he will take it upon himself to make sure that you hear his every opinion on everything. And also that his opinion is really important and you should listen to it, especially when it comes to the most important things in life. Now, we've received hints of this from Jordan Peterson over the years. For example, many of you may know or may not know, there was a point in time when he was selling $2,000 rugs. Now, I have no issue with people selling merchandise. It is perfectly fine. It's perfectly okay. And even if he wants to put the price tag of $2,000 on a rug, that's fine. And there are some rugs in the world that could cost $2,000 or even more. Rare Persian rugs that were woven in the 19th century, that sort of thing. But the reason why he was selling it for $2,000 was because he put his signature on it. Now, put it this way. Most people, myself included, have no issue with selling merchandise, but it would never occur to me, and I think a bunch of other people, to sell a rug at that price unless you really think that your signature on that rug is so valuable and so worth it that any individual who decides to spend $2,000 on that rug is making one of the best decisions of his life, and he's getting so much value for it. And the implication here, of course, is that Peterson really thinks that his opinions matter and that if you're buying that $2,000 rug, well, bucko, you're making a great decision. And the fact that he's willing to sign it for your sake, you're getting incredible value for your money. And that's the thing. It's one thing to sell a T-shirt for nineteen ninety nine, But when your ego is up in the clouds, like Mr. Peterson's is, what happens? Well, then you sell rugs for $2,000. But that's not the only thing. I've jokingly referred to Peterson as our Lord and Savior, and we actually have good evidence that he views himself as a kind of religious figure, maybe even a prophet. In fact, he was interviewed by a gentleman a while back and asked if he was a modern prophet, a prophet to replace the prophets of old. You can have a listen to what he says in response. So just going back onto this issue of, of you sort of almost being a prophet in a way, do you view yourself as that? I mean, as religion declines, you go on this world tour, millions of people read your books, billions of people probably watching videos online. Uh, do you see yourself as a sort of new religious phenomenon for people? Not new. Not new. And I see myself as fortunate that's how I see myself, that I have the opportunity to do this. But are you a prophet? And, uh, see, to say yes or no, I have to think about how, I think I have to think about how, how I might be conceptualized, how what I'm doing might be conceptualized. No, I think I see myself as a psychologist, and fundamentally, I am a psychologist. I'm a behavioral psychologist. Now, after a lot of deliberation, as you've just heard, Peterson comes to the conclusion that, in fact, he is a psychologist, a clinical psychologist, a behavioral psychologist, whatever. But that wasn't his initial answer. He took his darn time before he decided to deny the description of being a prophet. In fact, initially, he says he's just fortunate, or that might depend on how he has to conceptualize himself. Now, what does that tell you? For most people, with a normal psychology and a normal ego, if you ask them in a non-joking way, are you a prophet, they would just say, no, I'm not a prophet. I'm Bob, and I'm a garbage man, or I'm John, and I'm a professor of economics, or I'm Dave, and I'm a dermatologist. They, they wouldn't take their sweet time in deliberating. Hmm, am I a prophet? I'm not sure. And these are hints that tell us, very much so in my view, that Peterson is a sort of megalomaniac. Now, of course, what people will cite in response to this will be that Peterson wants to help people, and 
Millions of people potentially have been helped by Peterson. But they're discounting not only the possibility, but the extreme likelihood that it is more than possible that a person can feed their ego vis-a-vis a false type of altruism, which is to say, yeah, you can want to quote-unquote help people and do it for the sole reason that it boosts your ego. And we can go back to the religious nature of the guy. He has 12 rules for life. Well, what does that sound like? The Ten Commandments. Rules you have to follow. And all the while, ignoring the fact that his own house is not in particularly good order and has not been for quite some time. Yet you're still supposed to listen to him. And this leads us to the unfortunate reality of him not staying in his lane. Now, maybe you do think he's a prophet or a divine figure. I happen not to. But clearly the stuff he talks about with respect to clinical psychology and personality is very interesting. I think it's probably pretty accurate. I've checked it out occasionally. And yeah, I think he has a good deal of expertise there. But when he moves away from that into lanes he knows little about, or lanes, frankly speaking, in the case of his advice regarding women, that he is not driven in for decades, he starts to lose the thread. But the reason why he thinks he has the authority to do so, and why you not only should listen, but must listen to him, is because he regards himself as a prophet, and his ego is immense, and it's pushing him to believe that. And so a lot of the acolytes of Peterson are obviously not going to like to hear that. But when you look at the evidence, and it seems clear to me at least, that when you look at him, he's operating off of a kind of feedback loop between a massively inflated ego and the seemingness of altruism and his quote-unquote desire to help people. Imagine this. Imagine you could come up with your own commandments and you could distribute them. In this case, you sell them, right? You sell your commandments to people. And they come forth and tell you how amazing these commandments are and how their lives allegedly have been changed by them. And you sell more and more of these commandments. What do you think would happen to your ego, potentially? Now, sure, some people are just humble and some people are not susceptible to that. Most people would probably allow it to get to their heads. They would start thinking of themselves as arbiters of the world. And that's exactly what has happened with Peterson. Everyone wants to hear what he has to say because he is a divinely appointed prophet. At least that's the way he views himself. And because he views himself that way, there are sufficient numbers of his followers and acolytes who view him in like fashion. Because it's clear at the end of the day that just being a clinical psychologist is just not that sexy. It's just not that special. So you need to be more. And the fact that he can't give a clear-cut answer initially as to what he is and how he should be viewed, sure, eventually he gets there, tells you a lot about the man's psychology and what his intentions are. And the stakes can sometimes be pretty high if you have knowledge or expertise in one field but decide to step out of your lane, if it's sufficiently important, you could be endangering people's lives. You could be potentially risking people's lives in the process. I'm not saying he's necessarily doing that. Although, as when it comes to women, he clearly is out to lunch and not paying attention to the modern mating dating market but something that goes in that direction, unfortunately. And part of it is human nature. Many people crave this sort of character in their lives, a prophet that will give them easy answers and tell them what to do, a father figure, right? A divine father, no pun intended here, who's going to direct them and tell them what to do in their life. And he talks about accountability, but ultimately these individuals are abdicating their own accountability to themselves and handing it over, transferring it to divine prophet Peterson. And in this sense, they can blindly follow his dictates, his commandments, his 12 commandments, and they will be just fine. And if something occurs that doesn't work out, it can always be attributed to their inability to perfectly follow his 12 commandments. You see how that works? So 
he's doing a lot of work for himself, and his acolytes are doing a lot of work for themselves too. And he's obviously fulfilling a psychological need that is deep-seated in many people. But none of that makes him necessarily authentic, and none of that necessarily makes it the case that everything he says should be perceived as the words of the divine. Again, we know for a fact that on some issues, he is not in touch and he's not aware of the reality, either on the ground or even outside of his own window. And that tells us that there's more than a little bit of something screwy going on in his head and in his interactions with the world. Anyways, as always, thank you for tuning in. Subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to be informed of my videos. If I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. May the gods watch over you, or if you happen to be an acolyte of Peterson, may Prophet Peterson watch over you. Until the next time, bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.